moved from the consent agenda. Any items? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Mr. Luna, seconded by Mr. Johnson. All those in favor of the consent agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion passes. Next item is number six, vouchers. Is there any discussion by the public on this matter? Discussion by the public. Hearing none, do I have a motion? Second. Moved by Mr. Johnson, seconded by Mr. Case. Discussion by council on vouchers. Discussion by council? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Ordinance third reading, amending chapter 8.56, noise control, section 8.56.060, permit for relief from designated levels of Title VIII Health and Safety of the Code of the City of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Thank you. Is there any discussion by members of the public on this item? Any discussion? Okay. Um, hearing none, Mr. White. Madam Mayor, the recommendation of the Finance Committee is to approve on third and final reading, and I so move. Second. Moved by Mr. White, seconded by Mr. Luna. Discussion by Council? Discussion by Council. Hearing none, this being an item on third and final reading. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Shaner? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Case? Aye. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Laborn? Aye. Mr. Luna? Yes. Mayor Orr? Aye. Dr. Rini? Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance second reading annexing to the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming, lot 14, block 5, Homestead Edition, first filing replat, situated the north half, northeast quarter, section 4, township 13 north, train 66 west, 6 p.m. Laramie County, Wyoming, located south of Homestead Avenue, north of the Cheyenne Greenway. Thank you. Is there any discussion by the public on this matter? Discussion by the public? Hearing none. Mr. Shaner. Uh, the motion is to uh, approve on second reading, and I so move. Second. Moved by Mr. Uh, moved by Mr. Shaner, seconded by President Rennie. Discussion by council. Discussion by council. Madam Clerk, may I confirm the motion? I have that it also should include staff conditions number one and two. That is correct. Sorry. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Okay, so motion is to approve with staff conditions. One and, and two. One and two. Any further discussion by council? Is that okay with the second? Yes. All right. Okay, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Ordinance second reading pursuant to section 2.2.1 zoning map amendments, section 5.1.2 zoning districts established, and section 5.1.3 official zoning map of the Unified Development Code, changing the zoning classification from county MR, medium density residential, to NR2 neighborhood residential medium density for lot 14, block 5, replot of Homestead Edition first filing, Laramie County, Wyoming, located south of Homestead Avenue, north of the Cheyenne Greenway. Thank you. Is there any discussion by the public on this matter? Discussion by the public. Hearing none, Mr. Shainer. Madam Mayor, the recommendation of the Public Services Committee is to approve on second reading, and I so move. Second. Moved by Mr. Shainer, seconded by Mr. Luna. Discussion by council? Discussion by council. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Ordinance second reading annexing to the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming, a portion of lot one, block one, Cheyenne Hills Church subdivision, and portions of the east half of section 25, township 14 north, range 66 west of the 6 p.m. Laramie County, Wyoming, located north of and including Pershing Boulevard, east of Farthing Road, also located south of Sage Road, east of Gunsmoke Road. Thank you. Is there any discussion by the public on this matter? Discussion by the public. Hearing none, Mr. Shainer. Oh, no, sorry. We'll hold up a minute. Welcome, if you wouldn't mind stating your name for the record, please. Good evening, John Edwards with Saddle Ridge Subdivision. Um, thank you for your consideration of the Saddle Ridge 13th filing tonight. Um, I'd like to ask, first of all, would you like me to present on it to give you a little bit more background information or was it sufficient at Public Service Committee? Mr. Shannon? Uh, Madam Mayor, do defer to uh, Mr. Edwards on whatever he thinks would be important to share. 
Well, I, I do think it's important to give everybody a little bit of history of how we got to where we are today. And if um, I could ask for about five minutes of everybody's time. Uh, with respect to everybody's time, if I could present, I, I have two items before you tonight. One is an annexation and one is a zone change, both for the same parcels. So, uh, like I say, if I could have about five minutes of your time, and special thank you to Public Service Committee, uh, having already heard this presentation. Um, the 13th filing in and of itself is pretty simple and straightforward. The explanation of how we got here, it's important to understand, and uh, it's a little bit more detailed. And so I prepared a, a written report here, and I don't want to miss anything. And I've, I've got some exhibits here. Um, each one of these exhibit packages is three pages. Um, each page is divided up into squares, and each square has a letter in the bottom right-hand corner. As I go through the presentation, if I reference Exhibit A, um, please turn to the corresponding Exhibit A, which is the letter I just referenced, and um, the exhibits go to up to G. So um, the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory, if I can pass these out real quick. Thank you. a second to make the rounds. Okay, we do. Yeah, we, I think we got Perfect. one coming down that way. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're set. Thank you. So let's begin by turning our attention to Exhibit A on the first page. <clears throat> this is the master plan of the community as it was presented and approved in 2015. In order to understand how the Saddle Ridge 13th filing fits into the overall master plan of the neighborhood, it's necessary to go back in time about two and a half years and provide a little history. Moving our attention to Exhibit B on the first page. In the summer of 2015, we received preliminary plat approval on a total of 140 acres of land located immediately east of the existing Saddle Ridge neighborhood and immediately west of the Christensen Road right away. This 140 acre preliminary plat consisted of roughly 400 new home lots, a 10 acre new elementary school parcel, and an adjoining expansive park and open space system. The UDC mandates that 8% of a developable parcel of land be donated to the city for open space purposes. We wanted as much of an expansive and open feel to the finished community as possible, so we donated almost double the amount of required open space at 14%. Let's move to Exhibit C. On the heels of the 140-acre preliminary plat approval, in the fall of 2015, we submitted and obtained approval on the original 8th filing final plat. This plat consisted of roughly 65 acres of the original 140-acre preliminary plat boundary. It originally contained 106 single-family lots on the northern half and 124 twin-home lots in its southern half. We both annexed this eighth filing as well as updated the zones on the full 65 acres to MR in conjunction with the approval of the eighth filing final plat. So to date, 65 acres of the original 140-acre preliminary plat have been annexed, rezoned, and received final plat status. This leaves the remainder of 75 acres of the original preliminary plat to be developed. Please turn to Exhibit D on the second page. Since the approval in late 2015, there have been a few modifications to the original 8th filing final plat, which then created smaller filings now known as the 10th, 11th, and 12th filings. The majority of these modifications only affected the southern half of the original 8th filing final plat, as you can see on the exhibit. The 10th filing was created when we converted 20 twin home lots into 10 single family lots to reduce density across from the future elementary school. 
The 11th filing was created when we were contacted by our neighbors to the southwest with a request to provide them with a new road access so that their property would be more developable. We granted their request, which required us to remove 221 lots on our southwestern border in order to provide enough area for a potential future road access. You can see the outline of the new road access for them in the 11th filing on the exhibit. The 8th through 11th filings are now fully constructed and permit ready, and several new homes are under construction already this year. The 12th filing, which we began construction on last year, consists of 32 single-family lots. These lots represent 32 of the original 106 single-family lots in the northern portion of the 8th filing final plat. Please compare Exhibit D to Exhibit C in order to see this relationship. This now leaves a total of 74 single-family lots that were originally platted in the northern portion of the 2015 8th filing but have not been constructed to date. Now let's turn our attention to Exhibit F on page 3. This brings us to the present and the proposed Saddle Ridge 13th filing before you tonight. For clarification purposes, I'd like to discuss this 13th filing in two different halves, the north half and the south half. The north half of the 13th filing is essentially a replat of the northern portion of the original 8th filing final plat. The only difference in the lot design you see before you tonight from the original is the addition of a 5-acre parcel of land on the northern border of the original 8th filing. You can see this approximate 5-acre addition more clearly at the top of Exhibit D and E. This five acres was always part of the design, but was formally acquired from Cheyenne Hills Church in 2016 as part of an agreement to provide them with water and sewer main connections into our new system. This property was not contiguous with their building's property, so it was a win-win situation. Additionally, we agreed to provide the church with enough land area to build a potential future road access. It is not guaranteed that they will build this road access, so for this reason we provided a large utility and access easement in the same way we provided it for our neighbors to the southwest in the 11th filing. This area for the church's future wet utility connections and potential road access is labeled as Tract A on Exhibit E and F. As always, we wanted to limit impact on existing residents, so we created a 30-foot pathway corridor buffer and a full residential street on our far northern border of this 13th filing. This created a total of over 110 feet of buffer between our furthest northern homes and the existing county residents. We felt that by adding a pathway corridor on our northern border, it could be a nice future improvement for everyone as East Cheyenne continues to develop. The total impact of the additional five acres created the new street and trail corridor just mentioned, as well as 13 new single-family home lots. By adding these additional lots, it was necessary to redistribute the square footages through all of the existing lots in order to make them matching and symmetrical. With the redistribution of the square footages, this gave us a final difference of 18 new uh, standard single-family lots compared to the original northern half of the 8th filing final plat. There are now a total of 94 single-family lots proposed in this 13th filing compared to the 75 lots that were approved in this portion of the 8th filing final plat. All of these final 94 lots sit up in the hills on the highest elevations of this project and they will all showcase exceptional views looking back west at our city. Now turning our attention to the southern portion of this proposed 13th filing, you will see a 10-acre future elementary school parcel and 20 associated new twin home lots. The southern portion of this 13th filing is identical to the original approved preliminary plat. I am not authorized to speak on behalf of the school district, but I am authorized to coordinate annexation and build the surrounding street improvements. I give you all of this information to simply tell you that everything that we are proposing within this 13th filing is substantially similar to the original approved 140 acre preliminary plat and the 65 acre 8th filing final plat. The only difference at this point is the addition of a 5 acre parcel on the northern border which changed the final number and configuration of single family lots. Again, there was no change to the school site and surrounding street improvements from the original approvals. 
Saddle Ridge 13th filing will bring a much needed housing and community resource to the city of Cheyenne. In addition to its necessity, it will provide unique and quality residential lot options and neighborhood amenities. The home lots themselves are 15 to 20 percent larger than the average residential lots in Cheyenne, yet they will re remain affordable to the community. Although Saddle Ridge has been very challenging to design and build because of the dramatic natural topography, the final neighborhood will be a valued enhancement to our city. We are very excited to offer the completed vision to the community. Thank you again for your consideration. Thank you. Are there uh, any questions of Mr. Edwards by council? Any questions? All right, any other public discussion? Any other public discussion? Okay, hearing none, Mr. Shainer. Madam Mayor, the recommendation of the Public Services Committee is to approve on second reading with revised annexation map and ISO move. Second. Moved by Mr. Shainer, seconded by Mr. Luna. Discussion by council? Discussion by council. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. On the second reading, pursuant to section 2.2.1 zoning map amendments, section 5.1.2 zoning districts established, and section 5.1.3 official zoning map, the unified development code, changing the zoning classification from county A1 agricultural and rural residential to MR medium density residential for a portion of lot one, block one, Cheyenne Hills Church subdivision, and portions of the east half of section 25 township 14 north, range 66 west of the 6 p.m. Laramie County, Wyoming, located north of and including Pershing Boulevard, east of Farthing Road, also located south of Sage Road, east of Gunsmoke Road. Thank you. Is there discussion by the public on this? Public discussion? Okay, hearing none, Mr. Shainer. Madam Mayor, the recommendation of the Public Services Committee is to approve on second reading with revised map and ISO move. Second. Moved by Mr. Shainer, seconded by Mr. Case. Discussion Madam. by council? Madam Mayor. Mr. Shainer. I move to amend by substitute dated 4-11-2018. Second. Motion has been made, uh, made to um, substitute. Uh, seconded by Mr. Cook. Discussion by the public on the amendment. Discussion by the public. Discussion by council? Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Mr. Shainer. Uh, yeah, Madam Mayor, I'll defer to uh, Seth Lloyd or Ms. Montana. Thank you. Madam Mayor, members of the council, the substitution is both uh, a corrected title on the zoning map and also on the ordinance, whereas now it says uh, classification, reclassification from County A1 agricultural and rural residential to MR medium density residential, the words and P public should be added. And that is the correction. Sounds like a housekeeping yes, matter. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other discussion by council? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye on the amendment. Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes with amendment. We are now back on the main motion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Ordinance second reading pursuant to section 2.2.1 zoning map amendment, section 5.1.2 zoning districts established, and section 5.1.3 official zoning map at the Cheyenne Unified Development Code, changing the zoning classification from conditional MUR, mixed use residential emphasis, to NB neighborhood business for a parcel of land consisting of all of Block 16, Hellman's Edition Subdivision, Cheyenne, Wyoming, to be known as Peak Wellness Center, located 510 West 29th Street between O'Neill and Holmes Avenues. Thank you. Is there any discussion by the public on this matter? Any discussion by the public? Hearing none, Mr. Shainer. Madam Mayor, the recommendation of the Public Services Committee is to approve on second reading and I so move. Second. Moved by Mr. Shainer, seconded by Mr. Case. Discussion by council? Discussion by council. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Ordinance second reading, amending, creating, or deleting various chapters and sections within Title 15, Buildings and Construction of the Cheyenne City Code, relating to adoption of the National Electrical Code, 2017 edition. Is there any discussion by the public on this matter? Discussion by the public. Hearing none, Mr. Shainer. Madam Mayor, the recommendation of the Public Services Committee is to approve on second reading and ISO move. Second. 
Moved by Mr. Shainer, seconded by Mr. Johnson. Discussion by council. Madam Mayor, oh, go ahead. Madam Mayor, through you just sure. wanted to get an update from uh, Director Briggs on how we were coming with stakeholder input. Robert Briggs, Planning and Development Director. Uh, Madam Mayor, through you, uh, I have directed the uh, building division staff to compile a, an email list of electrical contractors in the community. That is in progress and we'll be reaching out to them uh, electronically via email. Awesome. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. Okay, when I read this, it just as far as like you mentioned cables and things of that nature, was there anything else that pertained to this that was outside of really just the packet? Because since he's asking for a recommendation for stakeholders, I'm just concerned why that wasn't done prior to this being introduced. Thank you, Mr. Briggs. Um, Madam Mayor, through you. Uh, in this case, this particular code is different from the ICC building code set that we adopt. This is a health and safety standard for uh, electrical work, which is adopted at the state level, of which we are required to adopt the technical specifications, at least at the standard that uh, the state has, and there is some timing that is tied into that. And uh, we were trying to work cooperatively to make sure that we were keeping up with the expectation that we adopt that. And so in future, we'll try and be out ahead of that and make those contacts earlier. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Any other discussion by council? Madam Mayor. Mr. Shannon. Since it's on a second reading, I'm happy to move it forward <coughs> and keep it going. We may end up needing to postpone on third reading. Um, having gone down this road before with codes, uh, just I think it is best practice to have that vetting before. Um, I, I, I read the statute 359.121, and um, you know, my biggest question is I want to know in the new code if there are um, items that have significant costs associated with them that are not necessary to meet the minimum standards put forth by the state. That's really the big question I want from the, the electrical community. Uh, and so hopefully we can get some of those answers, but I'll, I'll vote to move it forward today. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Shainer. Any other discussion by council? Any other discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Ordinance first reading, amending the City of Cheyenne solid waste fee schedule. This item is referred to Finance Committee. Next item is number 17, resolution precluding the rental or use of the city's athletic fields by Steve Avila or SAA Enterprises until those parties have repaid the City of Cheyenne and Cheyenne Mustangs baseball for all losses sustained from the 2017 Cotto World Series Tournament. Thank you. Discussion by the public. <coughs> Any discussion by the public? All right. Come on down. For any of you wishing to address council, if you could state your name and any organization that you're representing, or if you're just representing yourself. Uh, Jerry Ennis, um, representing Two Doors Down, the business that I own. And um, I primarily just have some questions because most of the information I've gotten has been through the Wyoming Tribune Eagle, and um, obviously you take the personal side out of it. So my, my initial question is, did Mr. Avila borrow money from the city of Cheyenne? Mr. Ennis, that answer is no. Okay. So who, who did borrow money from the city of Cheyenne, if anyone? Mr. Ennis, the, um, the arrangement was between the city of Cheyenne and the Cheyenne Mustangs. Okay. So I guess in my mind, it's very clear that in order to block somebody from doing an event, um, it is a dangerous thing that we're doing or considering. Um, if someone pours concrete at my house and I'm not happy with it, um, I can come to the city of Cheyenne if they're trying to get a contract with the city and ask them to not allow them to do that. Mr. Ennis, you could probably ask. I'm not sure if it would be granted. Correct. Well, my, my primary concern is simply this. We have an opportunity to have an event that, for selfish reasons, can put people through the doors of my business. And I think it's very dangerous to eliminate such events when we're trying to promote business and growth in our city. Um, I, it's a very unfortunate circumstance that the Mustangs are in. And uh, 
as many of you may or may not know, um, I've done fundraising for the Mustangs. Um, I continue to support in different areas because I think it's a good organization and whatnot. It was a bad business deal. I met Mr. Avila for a portion of an afternoon, and uh, my first question about the whole tournament was the date. The date really struck me. I didn't see how they were going to pull it off. Um, at that time of year, most elite players, particularly 18 years old, are getting ready to move on to college. Um, I'm not so sure they're going to pack up and make an eight-day trek down in Cheyenne, Wyoming, on their own dime, on top of it. So um, I think Mr. Avila has addressed that and moved the date to a more conducive time to allow teams um, to come up. Um, I looked at the, the roster of teams that's, uh, I think they're paid, and I, if I'm incorrect, I think a uh, council member or more has, con has confirmed with those teams that they are coming and are paid. And uh, it, it's a pretty impressive list. I was concerned initially that Northern Colorado teams would be here, so they are play their games and head back to Northern Colorado, but there's teams from Canada, there's a team from California, Idaho, Washington, etc. Um, so they will be forced basically to stay here, and so I think we'll benefit. And I think the whole idea of the tournament in the inception was to benefit the economy. Um, I certainly am sorry that the Mustangs had to suffer, and I wish there was a way, and I hope there is a way that that can all be worked out because I think it's a good organization. And at the end, it's not about the Mustangs organization or any other organization for that matter. It's for A.J. Folds, Brett Thompson, Braxton Innes. They're the players. They're the guys that need to have those opportunities. And that's why I really feel that this should go on. Um, and that's basically the nuts and bolts of what I have to say. Thank you very much. I Thank appreciate you. it. Any other discussion by the public? Any other discussion by the public? <clears throat> For the, for the sake of time and, and knowing that some people are in the middle, if you do plan on speaking, if you wouldn't mind coming um, down to the podium and, and uh, being ready, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Hi. My name is Carissa Fuller. For those of you that don't know me, um, I'm here as a parent of a baseball player today and to address the ongoing issues with Steve Avila. I know the city's trying to put a Chinese wall between them and Mr. Avila as it pertains to the original $50,000 contract, but that's simply not fair. Media reports and actions by the city's leadership prove otherwise. The city was an active participant in the original negotiations, spotlight, and execution surrounding the contract, so it's simply not fair for you to stand back now and say, not our problem, not our contract. Being an active participant in the original contract negotiations makes you an active player now. Ironically, the same behavior is often seen in youth sports. Parents and coaches are the first to stand up when the athlete does something great, saying, that's our kid, we're so proud. But when the kid does something bad, those same people are saying, oh no, that's not our fault. The $50,000 is ultimately your money. How it was funneled to Avelia is irrelevant at this point, and any business model in America will tell you, once a customer goes bad on a debt, you stop doing business with them. I cannot think of one business that says, you know, they owe us money, but let's continue to do business with them in hopes that they make it right. That simply is a ludicrous idea. If Mr. Avelia has an opportunity to run this tournament in Colorado, by all means, let him do it. He stands to make the same amount of money there as he can here. I have no doubts he can. I have no doubt. I have doubts he can get fields in Colorado in July, and that is why he's so persistent in coming here. He did a great job being responsible leaders and mitigating the situation up until February, when one of your directors threw you right back into the right back into this with his rash decisions and apparent desire to go behind your back and become Mr. Avelio's personal event planner, proven in the public records request. But this isn't about all that anymore. It's about the federal government saying we can't refuse fields. Fields rental used with grant money to anyone. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't deviate from written implied policies that we have always had here with field rentals. 
The, there is a clear timeline that shows backdoor dealings and unethical behavior by a director under your leadership using that law to his sudden advantage in orchestrating his presumed preference of Avelia renting the field. This alone should be enough to stop all negotiations and open up an internal investigation on your part. Discrimination and personal ideo ideologies have been found in the records request and you owe it to the community to look at it. I will not waste time going over the timeline as you all have it, but I will note that the sudden willingness on behalf of Parks and Rec is odd, to say the least, given their history. I helped a youth baseball organization in this town. I stood in the ridiculous line in the wee hours of the cold mornings in January and was late to work to reserve fields. If we didn't submit all the proper paperwork, I don't recall ever getting a courtesy reminder email or telephone call instructing me on how to submit my paperwork or ask me where my paperwork was. In fact, my communication with staff in that office was minimal and not because I didn't try. They have, they had and have always had an I don't care next in line attitude. That was up until Avilia. The field should have been open to reserve the day after your February meeting voting not to engage in the contract and open to the first comes first served basis that would have defaulted them to the Mustangs as they called that day. This is how it's always worked in your written and historical implied policy in the history of my 10 years playing baseball in this community. I'll go off record a little bit and say that there is no off the records. Okay. <laughs> so I'll just leave you with this. There's a famous baseball quote out there that says, the name on the front of your jersey represents who you play for. The name on the back of your jersey represents who raised you. Do them both justice. The front of all jerseys and all baseball players in Cheyenne, regardless of organization, says Cheyenne. Do the right thing by Cheyenne and the kids. Thank you. Is there any other public discussion? Any other public discussion? Good evening. My name is Major Dorr, and as a, just an individual, as a citizen, if you can't pay your back debts, don't proceed any further. I don't think the city should be stuck for a bill or something like this that they should not do. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Other public comment? Mr. White. There's no other public comment. No. Mr. White. Madam Mayor, this item failed at the Finance Committee. Therefore, there is no recommendation on this item. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Moved by Mr. Johnson, seconded by Mr. Shainer. Discussion by Council? Madam Mayor. Mr. Shainer. I'm going to hand out the draft amendment by substitute here. Once everybody gets it, we'll go through it. I think it um, strikes a good compromise between the, the various interests we're dealing with this evening. So I guess, actually, I'll, I'll move the amendment by substitute, and if there's a second, I'll explain it. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Shainer, seconded by Mr. Case. Mr. Shainer? All right, so thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, a couple minor tweaks to the whereas clauses, but that's basically the same type of recitals. So moving to the second page and the result portion of the resolution. What this amendment would do is basically place four conditions on the use of the tournament. Um, so it would allow the tournament to move forward, which I think we all want to see, um, but under this, these certain conditions. And so the first is that SAA Enterprises, which would include Mr. Avila, pay in full all field use and player fees to the city no later than three days in advance of the 2018 tournament he has scheduled. We do that because last time he failed to make all those payments and uh, the Mustangs were left with trying to make up for that, that loss for all the people that needed to be paid. Uh, the B would be SAA Enterprises, which again includes Mr. Avila, would agree to hold registration open until and including May 15th, 2018, to permit any team that wants to play in this tournament that was not able to do so because the deadline has been cut off uh, to, apl to apply and play. And so basically this just extends for a couple weeks the ability for teams to, to join the tournament. 
and hopefully we get more, uh, the more the merrier. Uh, the third is uh, an agreement just to, to treat all the Cheyenne teams the same uh, in terms of using the home dugout if there are more than one Cheyenne team. The fourth is to ask uh, this promoter to produce documentation to the city of Cheyenne evidencing and accounting for all revenues earned during the 2018 tournament within five days after the conclusion of the tournament. So show us your documentation for the revenues you've earned because last time again, we never saw any of that. And then the fifth is um, that he will agree to, after providing that documentation, to give 30% of his gross revenues from the tournament to the city of Cheyenne. And then the city of Cheyenne, on a pro rata basis, depending on how much that 30% actually is, will um, keep some of that and then divvy it up to the parties that were damaged in 2017 on a pro rata basis. So basically apportion it based on how much those, those uh, individual entities lost. And so that way, uh, you know, I, I doubt 30% is going to be a full recovery for everybody for every dollar that they lost by this individual last year. But it sends a message to him that we aren't just going to let, you know, someone do that to the city and do that to our community. Uh, it lets the tournament go forward and hopefully it, it helps a little bit with the financial injury that everyone suffered uh, last year. Uh, that concludes the changes, Madam Mayor. Are there questions by council? Yes, Mr. Johnson. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to read this or vet this, so tr just like tradition states with me, I'll be voting no because I haven't had a chance to reflect on it. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, other comments? Madam Mayor. Questions, Mr. Shaner. Can we go to public comment on the amendment? Um, let's stick with council first. Okay, thank and you. I, I have a I have a question regarding the five days. It seems like that's a payment. Um, having run and and events before. Uh, Five days seems like a very short period of time to be able to collect the revenues, do the accounting, and actually make that payment. I would, I would actually think 30 days is, is actually, um, again, getting payment from everybody else, and I, I, I would say 30 days. Uh, Madam Mayor, I, I think if the amendment passes, I'd certainly be open to that, that amendment as well, to the 30-day extension. Other discussion by council on the amendment? Um, yes, Madam Mayor, through through yourself. Um, yeah, I was sort of thinking the same thing. Um, I think thirty days thirty days will certainly work, but I'm I'm not necessarily I, maybe I'm missing something. I I'm seeing that just um, not necessarily has uh, as his payment, but uh, um, I do believe it's reasonable within thirty days certainly to. Uh, for him to be able, like you said, to uh, collect all receipts and submit that within 30 days, I think that would be a reasonable, a reasonable ask. Um, but I'm also wondering if there should not, um, and, and I guess this is um, to the uh, the sponsor, the drafter um, uh, of the amendment. But I'm I'm wondering. Um, if he would like to uh, put in some some dates uh, for when the uh, payment of the 30 percent will be made I, I do believe uh, you know we may we may want to address that i'm just wondering what uh, what his thoughts are thank you madam mayor mr shaner uh, councilman cook so the current draft says five days after the conclusion of the tournament. Right. However, um, the mayor has expressed giving a little more latitude, which I, I think is perfectly reasonable. So since we don't do amendments to amendments, if this amendment passes, we can go in and amend and extend that, that five days to whatever we think is a reasonable time. Um, and uh, in response to that, um, I, that's fine if you believe that, that D covers that. Um, I just, I read D as just E. I was reading the part uh, D. I thought uh, that's what, that's what we were going to change as far as the uh, the five days. Okay, look, I can't read. All right. Um, okay. Yes. Um, okay. I yes. I apologize. I thought uh, I thought you were. 
um, I thought the sponsor was referring to uh, the time period in which the documentation of the receipts was, was being submitted. So uh, 30 days for the payment, um, I can live with that. Mr. Shaner, that, that five days is also included in D. I, again, think that five days, even for reporting it to the city, is, is pretty brief. Madam Mayor, if, the, if this amendment passes, I, I don't have any objection to that. All right, any other discussion by council? Madam Mayor. Mr. Lightborn. <clears throat> Was there a opportunity for uh, the people who are attending this meeting to review this proposed substitute tonight? Um, Madam Mayor, could you ask uh, my colleague to clarify exactly? Mr. Lightborn, could you ask the question again or clarify? Well, <clears throat> the people that are here just saw us get a substitute. That is not a minor or partial change in the policy that was in the original resolution that I submitted. Big change. I believe we all campaign on accountability and accessibility, but why can't we print these up and have them out at the door for the people that come to hear what we discuss? I think that's only fair and prudent, and obviously that's not the case. I just want that noted. Um, a little effort on our part would reach more understanding. And I want to say also that I submitted this resolution two weeks ago. And in that two weeks, I didn't hear anything from anybody else. I didn't hear about concerns or efforts that were underway to allegedly compromise or find a solution to this. I got a couple of electronic communications yesterday. Why did it, why, why did it take uh, that last minute? Why did it take the last minute for us to come up with something that's so important? I really, really expect more responsibility from this council. I'm sorry we don't have it. Thank you. Mr. Shader. Yeah, th thanks, Madam Mayor. Just, I, I believe there were three sort of open-ended questions directed at me. One, was this communicated to in interested individuals? Um, I, I can't say to all who it was. I definitely shared it with uh, members of the Mustangs organization yesterday uh, and, and had a little correspondence this morning. And, and my understanding was that they spoke with Councilman they weren't today, but, but maybe they didn't. Um, the second was, why can't we get them done sooner? Um, I'm, I'm not retired. I, I, I work on this as hard as I can. There's a lot of issues going. I get it done as soon as I can. Um, so in a perfect world, yeah, we'd have it well more in advance than it was. Um, certainly, if, if there is an opportunity to get it done in advance in the council budget, uh, we can start including uh, more printing in our budget to print handouts for everybody or figure out a way to post it on the screen. I think that would be great. Uh, and then third, about no one reaching out to you, um, Councilman, I called you uh, last week and you never returned my call. Uh, I texted you, you never responded to my text, and then you emailed me yesterday with capital letters N-O, no, so I didn't think there was any more room for discussion. So I did try to reach out to you to discuss this issue last week. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other discussion by council on this? I, I have one question, Mr. Shaner. Was this, did this go through the city attorney's office? No, Madam Mayor. Okay, any other discussion? Madam Mayor. Questions? Mr. Lewin. Why didn't it go through the city attorney's office? Mr. Shane. Uh, Madam Mayor, I literally did not have a final draft till about 1 p.m. today. So, just, 
didn't have time to send it through there, nor, nor do I think that's necessary. Madam Chair? Mr. Laywood? I think my point's taken. Any other discussion by council? Madam Mayor. Mr. Case? I actually think Kate's bringing this kind of thing up here, but um, like my colleague, Mr. Shaner, I tried to text and, and call Mr. Labor multiple times to discuss this issue over the last uh, the last week and was, was never returned a call or a text. So. Any other discussion by council? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Johnson? I guess I'm the odd man out. I talked to Pete yesterday. All right. Any other discussion by council? <laughs> Discussion by council. Okay, hearing none, we'll open it up to the public for discussion on the amendment. Please state your name and an organization if you're representing one. Madam Mayor and members of the governing body, my name is Jay Folds, and as you know, I'm an assistant coach for the Mustangs. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight on this important issue, but most importantly, I sincerely thank you for putting us in a position to finally achieve a solution on this issue in that it allows all parties to move forward. In particular, on behalf of the Mustangs organization, I want to personally thank Councilman Pete Laybourne for his vision, for his integrity, for his wisdom, and for his courage that it took to rally to the side of the community and the Mustangs organization in an effort to draft a resolution that we all know was the catalyst for why we are here tonight. I stand before you tonight as an appointed representative of the Mustangs organization. And I can assure you that the Mustangs are in support of Councilman Shaner's amended resolution. We were made, made aware of that amended resolution and had a chance to study it. If the adopted resolution passes council tonight, we will have finally united as a community to hold Steve Avila accountable for falling short for the 2017 Cava tournament. After having had a face-to-face -face conversation with Steve Avila this past weekend in Billings, Montana, I'm going to go out on a limb and say he too is ready for a solution and will we'll appreciate this resolution if it passes. The Mustangs were assured last fall that the city would not entertain any agreement with Steve Avila that did not include the Mustangs, only to find ourselves completely blindsided in the field scheduling meetings in January that negotiations were in fact ongoing between the city and Avila for the use of the fields for Cava 2018, effectively cutting out the Mustangs. The rest of this story is very well documented in my editorial, so I will not rehash it here other than to say all along, all the Mustangs have wanted to do is have the city rally to our side to hold accountable, to hold Avila accountable first before we move forward with 2018 and beyond. So tonight, here we are. The City Council has done a good job of building on the momentum created by Councilman Laybourne to arrive on a resolution that the Mustangs support and we encourage the governing body to pass tonight. This resolution ensures the three injured parties from last year's tournament, the City, the Mustangs, and the Millers will recoup funds to begin the healing process from 2017. This resolution also gives Steve Avila his shot, his opportunity to prove to all of us that he's capable of delivering the tournament that he promised to this great city. In that vein, the Mustangs have accepted Steve Avila's offer made this past weekend to us to allow us to play in this tournament. We were made aware that Steve Avila found an anonymous donor who will pay the entry fee for the Mustangs and we greatly appreciate that. As a matter of fact, I texted Mr. Avila earlier, thanking him for his gesture in that regard. None of this should be about egos. All of this should be about principles. Tonight, principles win in the form of accountability, as well as good faith negotiations and gestures that ensure the community will benefit, and the kids will get to play some baseball on some great baseball fields in the greatest of small towns, USA. In closing, if this resolution passes tonight, I am on board with the proposed way forward. The Mustangs are on board with the proposed way forward, and we will collectively root for Steve Avila to successfully deliver the promises he's made the city these past two summers. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other public discussion? Public discussion, hold tight, there, there may be questions. Public discussion first. Thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, City Council members, for indulging me for a few moments. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Robert Jarosh. I'm a partner with the law firm of Hearst Applegate here in Cheyenne. Uh, by way of some brief background, uh, my practice is largely devoted to representing local, uh, state, national, and international companies in discrimination and in employment law, um, although I practice in other areas. I also have a long history of uh, working with the city and this governing body, uh, dating back to at least 2008, uh, when I was hired by the city attorney's office to provide legal counsel to the city with respect to moving permits in historic downtown buildings. Um, over the years, I've provided additional services to the city. I've served as a hearing officer uh, for the city council, represented various personnel boards and administrative hearings, and mediated uh, fire commission rule negotiations. I'll just also brief briefly let you know that um, aside from my family, youth baseball is probably my greatest passion. I spent uh, 11 hours outside yesterday coaching a 14-year-old baseball team in, in uh, Greeley, and I would not have wanted to be anyplace else. Um, I assume it came through loud and clear in the various emails that I've sent all of you in the last couple of days how much I care about youth baseball. And I will tell you that Cheyenne's very lucky to have two very good programs um, who represent Cheyenne very well with respect to competitive baseball in Cheyenne. Uh, I came to speak with you tonight because I, although I can't provide legal advice, um, I haven't been uh, retained to do that in this particular case, and you have a very good city attorney uh, who can give you legal advice. I did get a few questions from the city council in response to some of my emails uh, related to the tournament. And so because you've asked in emails, I do just want to provide you with my brief perspective. I do certainly believe that the city of Cheyenne is well within its authority to protect the best interests of the community by putting conditions on the rental of the athletic fields uh, before Mr. Uh, Avila and his uh, corporation, to the extent that it still exists, can rent the fields. It's, it's obviously in the policies and procedures that you're all aware of that the city must rent the fields in the best interest of the community. And that's not just a statement of policy or procedure, but it's, it's also a fairly uh, concise statement of the way that I believe the law works with respect to uh, how a municipality can uh, govern the use of rental fields. Um, it's reflective of the law. The cases that I've read are very clear that the city has the, the power to deny permits and also to condition permits that are not in the best interests of the, the city, so long as they do so in a manner that's not illegal. And that would mean, you know, so long as you're not conditioning use of the fields in a discriminatory fashion, uh, or so long as you're not uh, infringing on someone's rights to engage in free speech. Um, as long as there is a, a legitimate government interest in regulating and putting conditions on the use of uh, athletic fields that are owned by a municipality, I believe the law is very clear that you can do that. And in this particular case, uh, Mr. Avila's interest is only economic. Um, he has no other uh, interest in putting on the tournament in Cheyenne uh, other than an economic interest. Uh, he is not part of any kind of a protected class. Um, this has nothing to do with his free speech rights. And so the, the law, as I believe, and as I have read it... Mr. Josh, I'm going to stop you. We, yeah. we, if you could stick to the amendment. I have yet to find out if you are for or against the amendment. Uh, I, am, I am for the amendment, and I am describing to you, Madam Mayor, respectfully, um, why I believe that the amendment is appropriate in response to Councilman Cook's question to me by email on Friday afternoon uh, that I believe you were copied on. Um, so in addition, I will tell you that the law says that this city council, a governing body, uh, has the right, perhaps even the obligation, to protect the economic welfare of its citizens. It falls comfortably within your powers, and I believe by uh, agreeing to and, and voting in favor uh, of this amended resolution, you are protecting the community in a way that protects uh, the community's values and the economic welfare of the community members who uh, were damaged in the past, and you are protecting against the potential <laughs> damage uh, to uh, those economic interests and those community members in the future. So I'll just close by saying, reiterating, because uh, Mary, you asked me, I, I believe that this 
amended resolution gives the city of the Mustangs and baseball in Cheyenne the opportunity to go forward with the tournament. It gives you the opportunity in Cheyenne the opportunity to showcase two of the best baseball programs anywhere in the region in a tournament that will have a great impact on the community um, and that, that will really allow the city of Cheyenne and these programs to showcase themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public discussion on the amendment? Public discussion on the amendment. Okay, hearing no further public discussion on the amendment, we are back on um, we're back on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. No. Uh, no votes are Mr. Johnson, Mr. Laybourne, and myself. That uh, the amendment passes. We are back on the amendment. Are there any amendments to the amendments? Madam Mayor. Mr. Shana. I move to amend uh, in the resolved portion number 1D where it says um, within five days after the conclusion of the tournament, the amendment would say within 30 days after the conclusion of the tournament. And then on subsection 1E, Again, uh, in that first sentence, gross revenues from the 2018 tournament within five days after the conclusion, uh, amend that to say within 30 days after the conclusion. Questions second. on the amendment? Second. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's been seconded by Mr. or by President Shaner. Uh, discussions by council on the amendment to the amendment? Uh, yeah, they, we have a couple of errors. Um, one, uh, one question that I have, Mr. Shainer, um, it, it's news to me that entry fees for the Mustangs will be waived, and I believe somewhere we need to make that accounting uh, clear with that as far as, um, you know, payment and, I, I guess, acknowledge. I, I don't know how much player fees are, but I think certainly that that should be accounted for within this resolution. Madam Mayor. Um, I think just to, to keep it clean, um, I don't think anything in this amendment prohibits uh, a private donor from paying their fees. What The way I read it is the Mustangs pay their fee just like any other team that wants to uh, enter and that the Mustangs have acquired a private donor to help them pay that. So I think we're fine. But Mr. Shaner, it was stated that Mr. Avila specifically went out and sought a donor for the Mustangs. I don't believe that he sought a donor for any other team. Uh, Madam Mayor, I would, I would leave that to Mr. Avila and those teams on where they get their player fees from. I don't think we need to weigh in on that. Okay. Uh, Attorney Hackle, did you see an error in this particular? Um, Madam Mayor, um, through you to Councilman Shaner. Councilman Shaner, in an email dated um, November 19th to you from Assistant City Attorney Ben Rowland, um, he pointed out, as actually was discussed earlier, in the first go-round of the contract with Mr. Avila, that SAA Enterprises has been administratively dissolved by the state of Washington. Therefore, my strong recommendation is that all the references in this resolution to SAA Enterprises be changed to Steve Avila, therefore making him as an individual personally responsible rather than dealing with an entity which, at least as far as we can tell, no longer actually exists. Uh, Madam Mayor, through Point you. Order. First of all, there's an amendment on the floor just dealing with changing five to 30 days. I don't disagree with the city attorney, but can we dispose of the existing okay. amendment before we move on? All right, any further amendments, or uh, any further discussion on the amendment to the amendment? If you could state that one more time, Mr. Shainer. Yes, uh, so we would change subsection 1D uh, to read within 30 days after the conclusion of the tournament, and 1E to say within 30 days after the conclusion of the tournament. Okay, thank you. Discussion by the public on this? Discussion by the public. Okay, hearing none. All those in favor of the amendment to the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Noes are Mr. Johnson and Mr. Laybourne. Madam Mayor. Mr. Shaner. Uh, in response to the city attorney, uh, Madam City Attorney, if you go to the first whereas clause of the, the proposed substitute, and you read the definitions, um, what we say in there is entered into an agreement with Steve Avila and SAA Enterprises LLC collectively 
SAA Enterprises. So the way I read that definition, a reference to SAA Enterprises is collectively Steve Avila and SAA. And the reason I like it like that is because his application, his down payment for the fields for this upcoming tournament, he references SAA Enterprises. Now I know that there's been some research that this is defunct, but I think we're safer as a city to include Steve Avila and SAA, considering that he's still using that, that reference. So that's why it's written that way. Mr. Madam Mayor, through you, um, I was unaware that that's how he's, how the current rental application reads, so um, I stand corrected and we can leave it that way. Okay, any other questions on the amendments? I have a question on the one, two, three. On the seventh, whereas, I believe that to be um, incorrect and, and not factual as far as the timing of the, uh, the uh, booking of the fields, if you will, and, and information that um, I've learned today as far as how long ago uh, the fields were actually booked. Um, this states where as subsequent to the governing body's unanimous rejection that then um, an application was submitted to rent the fields. I believe they were rented uh, much before the, uh, the vote of the governing body. So, um, thank you, Madam Mayor. So, whereas subsequent to the governing body's unanimous rejection of SAA Enterprises' proposal, you're saying um, the application was submitted before the rejection of the proposal? Yes. It's my understanding that it was actually booked last year at the time that the other, um, that the other games were, were booked as well. Madam Mayor, Mr. Chang? Um, I, I have the, the application, but I don't know when we voted down that contract. But um, regardless, since it's a whereas clause, um, I think we can just um, we can just we can just say um, let's strike it. Yeah, we can just strike it. That's fine. Madam Mayor, I'll move to strike the seventh whereas clause. Second. Motion's been made to strike the seventh whereas clause, seconded by Mr. Case. All those in favor? Uh, can we have a yep, thanks. Apologize. Um, so I guess before the February 12th, where all 10 of us unanimously voted against it, if we already knew that the, we had a contract or we already had the fields designated prior to February 12th, doesn't that change the entire scope of what we voted on on February 12th? Can I get a little more explanation of exactly why this is being, I mean, I don't mind that the warehouse is being removed, but maybe a little more clarification as to why it's being removed. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. <clears throat> Madam Mayor, Jason Sanchez, Community Recreation and Events. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so with the fields were put on hold because there was an opportunity for the city to enter into an agreement with Mr. Avila. So they had been put on hold. <laughs> Uh, following the February or the January um, uh, failure to enter into that agreement, uh, Mr. Avila then put in his application for the fields uh, that had been put on hold for this specific tournament. Can I get provided a date, please? Madam Mayor, that I can answer that. Okay, Mr. Shannon. Um, I have his application PDF. Uh, from Mr. Sanchez, who provided that to me. It was, his application was February 20th, 2018, but I can't speak to like when his communications started with Mr. Sanchez prior to that, but that's the day of the app, is 2 2018. So that's eight days after we rejected the contract. I can't really formulate a question, but that doesn't really seem exactly the right course of action. It's okay, so I guess so that came in on 2:20. So from two, uh, February 13th, the day after we rejected the contract, did anybody come forward on February 13th and request the fields? Yes. 
Madam Mayor, Jason Sanchez, Community Recreation Events through you. Uh, that is correct. Uh, the uh, Mustangs, Mr. Thompson, went to our uh, events division to ask for use of the fields. Uh, back up and just explain a little bit about tournaments and how we hold fields for the tournaments. Uh, each of the clubs uh, come in and they let us know which dates they uh, propose hosting tournaments at Powers and Pioneer. We put them on hold. Um, and then they utilize the fields for those. Nothing different than what we did with this uh, proposed wood bat tournament. It was a tournament that the city and perhaps Mr. Avila would have entered into an agreement with. And uh, so the fields were placed on hold just like we do for the other tournaments. Um, I will say right now that we have fields on hold for the Mustangs. Um, they have not filled out a contract. They have not put down a deposit, but we worked with them. That's what we try to work with all of these clubs. Uh, so that they can have their events and then they pay us for use of the field following. Well, I guess as a follow-up through you, so on February 13th, from what I'm gathering from that explanation, the fields were not actually opened up for new proposals, even though the council rejected the contract on February 12th. Is that correct? Madam Mayor, through you, that is correct. We did, the council did unanimous, unanimously vote to not enter in an agreement that did not remove that the opportunity for Mr. Avila to rent the fields on his own. Uh, follow up through you, but from what Councilman Shaner says, that request was approved. If it was approved on February 20th, when was it actually submitted? Madam Mayor, through you, I would have to go to our events division and ask them when they received it. Any other discussions by the council on the amendment to the amendment? All right. All those in favor of striking the seventh whereas clause, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. No. Uh, no with Mr. Um, Laborn, Dr. Rennie, President Rennie, Mr. Johnson, and Mr. Cook. Or. Yep, motion passes. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I have Mr. Rayborn, Dr. Winnie, Mr. Johnson, and Mr. Cook as the no vote cards. Thank you. All right, we are back on the uh, main amendment. Any other amendments? Any further amendments? Okay, any final discussion on, uh, on the amendment by the public? Any final discussion on the amendment by council? Madam Mayor. Mr. Laborn. I wonder what the takeaway for the community, the council, and the people that use our facilities is on this matter. It's uh, pretty amazing to me that we would be looking at an undetermined amount of money that might come from Mr. Avila. I don't know who is going to audit those transactions. I don't. I think it would only be appropriate, considering his history, to uh, have some real careful scrutiny of uh, those transactions because they're going to come back. So, assuming that 30 percent of the profits that Mr. Avila as, as I understand it, a single individual is going to receive here, that'll be split between the city, the Mustangs, and the apparel uh, <coughs> folks. I absolutely have to agree with my councilman for more, too. That helps a little. Way too little. And I am particularly pleased at Mr. Jarosha's explanation of the law. Thank you. That was very necessary because we have been misled about the interpretation of our own management of our fields and the funding that went into them from the very beginning. Oh, we can't, we can't turn him away. Of course we can turn him away, as he pointed out. 
So I would say that we're sending a message to the community. Right? It seems obvious this is going to pass. I'm not sure how it's going to work out. If it satisfied the Mustangs, so be it. If it satisfied the council, so be it. But there's a very clear and explicit message that goes out to the community. And that message is that the back door is open. Come on down. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussions by council? Any further discussions? Okay, we are back on the main motion. Those in favor of the amendment? Can we have a comment on that, please? We've already opened it up. So I thought it was an amendment, okay. No, that's okay. If, feel free to have the mic. The main motion as amended. I just. This is the reason I vote no on all of these, is I really don't like constructing resolutions from the dais. I just think it's poor practice that we continue to do this, and this is how it appears to the public that we don't have any idea what's going on. Any other discussion by the public? Excuse me, by the council. Okay, hearing none, back on the main motion for the amendment. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. no. Those are Mr. Johnson, Mr. Laborn, and myself. The amendment passes. Next item is number 21D on page 6. Appointment of Kyle Wall and Lane Kilvin to the International Fire Code Board of Appeals and Stephen Bates and David Holly to the Mayor's Council for People with Disabilities. Discussion by the public. Do I hear a motion? Moved by President Rennie to approve, seconded by Mr. Luna. Discussion by council? As this is a mayoral appointee, I am unable to vote. All those in favor of the appointment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Reappointment of Kevin Williams to the International Fire Code Board of Appeals. Discussion by the public? Discussion by the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion? Moved by President uh, Rennie, seconded by Mr. Shaner. Discussion by council? Discussion by council. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion passes. Other business? Is there any other business uh, to come before us by the public? Any other public discussion? This is Major Door again. I'm still opposed to people that owe the city of Cheyenne a debt and they haven't paid it. How would I get by if I owed someone money and I still wanted to get more something else from them and I couldn't do it? I'm sorry, but this deal on the ball game, the ball field, it should be no until that debt is paid in full. Then you can start anew. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion by the public? Any further discussion by the public? Okay, any other business by council? Madam Mayor. Mr. White. Um, I just wanted to uh, say a quick word about the uh, huge success that was Fridays in the Asher on Friday night. Um, we had a capacity crowd, I believe, for the first time in that event's history of over 375 people. We were, uh, my wife and I volunteered at it. We were told not to let any more people in. Um, so it, it usually takes also about 30 volunteers from the community each Friday evening to run that event. And we received um, communication this morning that um, a group of airmen who are working towards a uh, leadership uh, class on base have uh, generously volunteered their time for this Friday's event so that the normal volunteers can not work and actually enjoy the show. So it's uh, a, a big compliment to our friends and neighbors from the Air Force Base that they'd be willing to do that, spell uh, the 20 to 30 people that um, work, their, work their butts off every Friday night to put on a great event. 
and um, just wanted to uh, let everyone know, my colleagues on the council and you in the audience and people at home, that, um, that the uh, folks on base generously uh, stepped up for this Friday night. Thank you. I saw smiles from the fire chief that you did not violate the uh, capacity code. I was a little worried about that since I was the one taking money at the door and I kept, <laughs> the line was down the stairs and I'm like, holy cow, if uh, Chief Hoggett shows up, uh, I got, it would really look bad for me. Well, so. Okay, any other, any, <laughs> any other uh, matters to come before? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Johnson. Um, actually, uh, the predecessor to uh, Fridays in the Asher is we did a fundraiser in association with Accomplice and released our first craft beer uh, that what benefited uh, the Rooted in Cheyenne program. And for some reason, uh, we actually tapped out in one hour and 45 minutes and Accomplice had no seating capacity and they ran out of beer cards and there was a line out the door there. So that was a fantastic success. And we're continuing it on, even though it's a Monday night, a week from tonight um, at Accomplice again is our Arbor Day um, celebration. The back room is already rented and we are releasing our Juniper Spruce beer. So hopefully we have the success that we had on Friday night with our Amber Rye. All right, thank you. Any other um, business? All right, I just want to remind everyone, um, exciting day for Cheyenne tomorrow. We have the folks from Bloomberg uh, coming into town. Um, the public is welcome to join us at 7 p.m. at the Greer Building to basically unveil our buildings with a purpose um, idea and initiative and uh, we're, we will be conducting our first testing with entrepreneurs and business owners um, beginning at 5 but it's open to the public at 7. All right, hearing no further business, this meeting is adjourned.